Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So now you show some examples. Okay, this is one number one uh, sequence for a particular protein, and you give something on the red red font. So can you see this red font? So can you guess the the region with the red font? Hydrophobic. It's completely hydrophobic, right? If you see the residues, most of the residues are alanine, valine, phenylalanine, isolation, so on. In this case, this protein, this region is predominantly with the hydrophobic residues. So I give another sequence, right? This is another sequence called phi cro. So if you see this sequence, this is short sequence. By short sequence, you will get the predominance of some specific residues. Which residues are dominant? Positively charged. Positive charged residues. So how many residues here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 residues, right? 11 residues, 11 positive charged residues in this, this sequence. Here I give another sequence. Here if you see, there is a higher occurrence of serines. We can see several serine residues in this case. So, when you scan the literature, if you see the literature about the functions of different proteins, right? So, we can guess okay, these positive charge residues are important to interact with negative charge moieties. In this case, you can think of a protein which can have high tendency to interact with negative charge moieties. So, which molecules have negative charge? Mainly DNA is negative charge because of phosphate group. So, in this case, it requires the opposite side positive charge residues. So, this protein could be a DNA binding protein that right, have high tendency to interact with the DNA. In fact, yes, because phi is the crow repressor that right, this interacts with the DNA. Likewise, here if you see, so here you can see the dominance of the stretch of hydrophobic residues, they, this residues prefer to be in the membrane, right. So, in this case, this chain could be a membrane protein, right? Actually, that is correct because this is a photosynthetic reaction center of M chain. So, in this case, this is a membrane protein, right? It has several transparent segments. This is one of the segments. So, likewise, here you can see one example. Here, this is the sequence for one beta barrel protein. Beta barrel proteins have high dominance of serine residues to form the hydrogen bonding network to maintain the stability and the function uh, structure of these barrels, right? So, this is why it is highly occurring in this particular protein, fine. Now, the question is if I give these three sequences, is it possible to discriminate? Okay, A is this type, B is this type, and C is this type, yes or no? Okay, let us see. So, there are various uh, features we discussed. What are the various features we discussed till now? Composition, Composition occurrence, Molecular molecular weight, hydrophobicity. hydrophobicity and different amino acid properties, right. So, for example, if you have two groups of proteins, group A and group B, if I give you a new protein, can we able to tell this protein belongs to group A or this protein belongs to group B, okay. So, if I here I take two groups, group A and group B, so I get the, for example, I collected all the proteins in the uniprot in group A and all the proteins belong to group B. Then, if you get all these sequences, I can calculate the composition, right? Because just yes, you can calculate n of y by n. Take all the residues, count the residues of each type, normalized by n, you will get the composition, right? This is group A, for example, this is group B. You get the composition for 20 different residues. Here are 10 residues and here are 10 residues. And when you compare these two values, for example, if you take alanine, for the group A, the value is 8.47 and the group B 8.95. If you get the deviation, right, then you can this is almost similar, right. This is average value, but if you consider the standard deviation, so this will be plus or minus 0 0.1 or 2, right. So, in this case, you will get the similar numbers. Some cases, yes, for example, you have acid, there is no change at all. Here 5.97, right, here this is 5.91, there is no change, the difference is only 0 0.06. But some residues, if you look in the details, they are highly different. For example, if you take cysteine, here it is 
but here in this case it is 0 0.47 that is 2 3 times different 3 fold difference 0 0.5 into 1.4 like if you glutamic acid histidine right this is 1.25 2.3 2 times difference right isolation also some of the more data this other residues here also you can see the difference this other way around here it is highly dominant in the case of group b this 8.05 this is group A, it is only 5.9, this is 6. So, some residues which are similar in both the cases and some residues which are significantly different, right. If they are different, then we can use these residues as the features or the uh, parameters or the properties, right, to discriminate or distinguish between these two groups, group A and group B. So, how to do this? First, we see the important residues and some residues this is just close to the 0, this is a difference of composition, I calculate the A minus B right, composition of A minus composition of B right, so we have the average values. So, if you some cases, okay it is very high, they will be less than 0 and some cases they are above 0. So, if you look into this different residues. I made a few groups. This, this is the aliphatic and the second one aromatic here. We have sulfur containing residues and polar residues and charge residues. And we could see some patterns. Some cases we can see pattern. For example, the polar residues. All the polar residues which are highly uh, preferred in the case of this group B because minus. Some of this the sulfur containing residues they are dominant in the case of group A. Here you can see some cases right also mainly charge residues in group A. So, in this case you can try to relate you can try to understand why some uh, residues are dominant in group A and some residues are dominant in group B. Actually we know what is group A and what is group B. The structures we know the functions we know. So, now we can explain the importance of these residues why its occurrence is high in some cases why it is low in some cases right we can find. And we use this information if it is very highly different for example, this is highly different even this is a, a place important role for discrimination. So, if you take these residues and the combination of these uh, specific residues we can able to distinguish between the proteins group A as well as group B fine how to do this. So, it is a very simple algorithm right, but you can complicate the algorithm right when you refine the results simply what we do we have the set of proteins from group A and group B. Take the all the proteins from group A and the value of, of group A composition you can calculate. Then take all the proteins from group B get the composition. Now, we have two set of values okay. for example, here we have the data one is A one is B. Now, what you do is we get the new protein X we do not know this belongs to A or this belongs to B right A or B we do not know. Then what to do first get the composition of this particular protein. So, we got 20 numbers here. So, here we have 20 numbers right we have here 1 to 20 for 20 residues and composition B 1 to 20 and protein X also we have 1 to 20. Now, we take compare the each composition for example, A, D, C or 20 residues get the difference composition of A minus composition of this X respectively we got to get the difference take the absolute and repeat for the 20 times 20 residues then get the summation i equal to 1 to 20 and finally, we get a number this way we can see this sigma a deviation from combo, uh, the group of proteins a repeat the same take the same composition x and compare with b do it for 20 residues i equal to 1 to 20 right. So, get the difference now you can see the total difference will be sigma of b. So, with the comparing composition A, we get sigma A and compare with the composition B, we will get sigma B. Now, compare these two sigma A and sigma B, which one has less deviation, which one is less deviation here? B is less, then this belongs to group B. If A is less, then the protein X belongs to group A. So, here just we compare the deviations. We can also apply some error functions right we can apply error function sigma 
like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 and 0 0.3 so on and you can optimize the performance. You can I will explain later about the how to assess the performance. There are various measures to assess the performance like sensitivity, specificity and accuracy. I will discuss uh, later classes. So, you can add d sigma and see in a set of 100 proteins we are able to predict or discriminate exactly for the maximum number of proteins. Then you can define this, uh, this error function. In this method we use the composition and the deviation. Instead of deviation you can also try to use some, some other measures. What other measures you can use? Here use deviation we can also use the correlation. We have 20 numbers here, 20 numbers here right you can get the correlation with A. Likewise you can get the correlation with B right then how which one you need to select which one is from, if it belongs to A the correlation will be higher right if this correlation R with the correlation with A is 0 0.9 and R with B is 0 0.7 then the protein belongs to A right. So, you can use correlation you can use the deviation and you can use an error functions and so on. Also here now we use the composition of all the 20 residues, but if you look into this figure all 20 residues are not showing very high difference only some residues the difference is significant. Then you can try with the residues which are showing only significance between this group A and B and see whether we can able to discriminate better or not. Secondly when you develop any method it is important to reduce the number of parameters number of properties instead of 20 if you could get the same performance with 10 then 10 is better right unnecessarily we do not have to include noise in the prediction performance ok. Now, I will show an example ok here this is I consider two proteins one is the group from group B this is group B ok here this is from group A. So, I have a sequence now what to do? get the composite uh, currents ok here this is the n is here from this n you can calculate the composition this composition then from this composition we know the composition from the globular protein or group A or group B right you can see here ok this is the composition group A and composition group B. So, then sub get the sub subtract the values so this is a sigma sigma of group A and sigma group B do it for all the residues then finally, sum up here this is 34 and here 39 which one is small this is small right this is small. So, this belongs to group A then to take the example group B here also we have calculated the n from n you can get the composition and here you can see this A this B get the deviation right the original values we have here these are original values we take the composition and subtract from either A or B for the 20 residues right. So, 8.47 is here and you can see this is 8.31. So, the difference is 0 0.16 for the other case it is 0 0.64. Likewise, you can see the difference mainly if you see the serine is here it is 8.46 8.46 if you look into this A it is 5.94 and the B it is 8.05 right you can see the difference here is 2.52 and B it is 0 0.41. Now, take the summation. So, this is 23 this is B which is small B is small right. Small. So, B is small. So, this is identified as group B right. So, this is simple uh, algorithm, but we need to refine this adding various other factors and estimating the performance and validating right that everything we need to do, but simple algorithms or simple features we obtain from the sequence you are able to classify the proteins from different structures or different functions. So, then once is that we can do a several online methods. So, here these are the various methods you can discriminate these types of proteins group A and group B. So, if you go with the composition you can try with the composition right. So, if you give the sequence right here you give the uh, sequence here right if you click on this then you can give the sequence if you get the sequence then it will ultimately calculate the occurrence from the occurrence you will get the composition from the composition you will get the sigma of A here sigma of B 
and from this number we can see this group B. So, it belongs to group B, I put this membrane, beta barrel membrane proteins as group B, right. So, if you see this one, the difference is very less because if you add several uh, residues and if you add only well use the data, data only for the specific residues, you can improve the performance that we need to try again and again. So, improve the performance. You can I have a question. So, this is the data. So, I have the composition for alpha, I have the composition for beta. Right, I have two values this alpha composition and this is the beta composition. So, now I have a question. So, this is the question I give this sequence. I want to know whether this belongs to alpha or beta. How to proceed? What to do? Composition. Right, first we use the sequence and calculate the composition. This is the composition, right. I can calculate, you okay, can take number of A's, number of D's, and all and normalize with the number of residues ok this is for the uh, the same order we give right, g a v right this is g this a this b and so on. Now, what to do take this number and subtract with these numbers alpha right. So, if we add up for all the residues we get 20 numbers then we take the absolute values and add up if you add up everything then you will get this number. Then what you have to do? Same. Repeat the same beta. with this number, this beta number. And for 20 residues, we calculate and sum up, right? The absolute values. Finally, we get this number. Then what you have to do? Compare. You have to compare these two. So and then how to decide this alpha or beta? Which are, Which are lower? Right? Because the deviation lower, that is biased to that particular protein, right? So this is lower. So we can predict this as alpha. I give another question, another question here you can do the exercise. So, this also you can uh, you have a sequence it is a long sequence with small sequence you can easily count long sequence you have to write a code right you can calculate uh, as we discussed earlier about the algorithm we can write a program to calculate the composition. So, this is the result 20 residues we have the composition now you subtract this from either alpha or from beta then you have to get the absolute values and take that uh, the summation right you will get the values alpha is 36.09 beta is 18.63. So, if you compare these two right this is less so this belongs to beta. beta. So, if the difference is significant very high 10 15 difference then easily you can discriminate if it is very close then it is difficult some cases this is why all the prediction methods sometimes fail in some case some aspects we cannot get 100 percent prediction accuracy because you can see some type of overlapping like which as you see in this composition right you can see some case it is very close. So, it is very close may be either group A or group B this is the reason why it find it difficult to discriminate for that cases we have to identify some features right not exactly this one which can discriminate in some other way only at least to that situation in this case you can combine only you use with very large difference in composition you can use this if there is less difference you use some other features right then you can incorporate in this case you can improve the performance one gives 70 percent and another aspect will be another 70 percent right if you combine both you can increase to 80 percent right you can do that. So, now th there is another features right there is pair preference in the composition we used only one residue and see how many times A, how many times D, how many times D, E all these things. But then the question is the occurrence of A always close to A, always next to D, always next to E, right. Here there are two A's, this A is just before C, this A is maybe something else, for example, this L. So, this A is after C, this C is after A, but this, this C is after L. So, another the question is how many times A comes next to A, how many times A comes next to C or E and so on right. In this case you can get the pair preference because we did two peptides. So, this is what we call this as dipeptide right if you take these two. So, we can say this is dipeptide like and these two this is A C and here this is C A. So, in this case there are various ways to get the preference. So, if you see the dipeptide of I comma J there you can see n i j with number of times of residue i which comes next to j 
I and J are the distribution of the 20 residues and to get the percentage you get normal 100 right, but you can normalize with the different factors either you can normalize with the n as we did in the case of composition here I normalize with ni plus nj that means totally how many residues which are involved in this inj if is i, I 5 times and j 9 times then there are 9 cases in the sequence. So, I normalize ni plus nj, but if you want to get the probability right if there are i residues of type i and another residues of type j n residues of type j then you can use as n i into n j. So, there are different ways to normalize, but they are related to each other right, but eventually the, the one which gives the importance is n i j number of times right the residue i which is come close to j right. This is a distribution of residues right at the positions i and i plus 1 right here n i is the number of residues of type i and n j is the number of residues of type j. For example, if you use this equation and I give a peptide, so if, if for example, if you see dipeptide preference for P e, how many times P e occurs here? 1, 2, that is it, 2 times. How many P's and how many E's? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 5 P's and 5 E's so is equal to 10. So, you can get this value is will be 20. Likewise, if you see this uh, real protein, okay. So, here you can see now number of AAs, right. Totally, how many times A comes? 1, 2, 3, 4, right. 4 times AA, but total AAs is 17 times. So, if you get this, you will get the value of 11.76. If you see, interestingly, if you see other case, it totally 0. If some two classes, one class it is 0, another class if you get some numbers then we can say that that pairs are important, that pairs can be able to discriminate in different classes. In this case, it can perform better than the specific composition right, just we use only one recipe preference for any particular protein. So, in this case, dipeptide proteins preference have more information, but the, the drawback is there we have 20 values, but here we get 400 values. So, if your data set is very high then it is good to use the recipe pairs. Data set is less because we get several zeros, but that is not so good for that uh, discrimination. So, in this case you better reduce the number of pairs or reduce the amino acid to amino acid composition. So, summarize what did we discuss today? Uh, lot of features. Uh, different features right, if we have a sequence what can we do? What are the different features we discussed? Composition, Composition occurrence, molecular, molecular weight, Hydrophobicity, different properties, pair preference, and so on. Then also we explain one example to distinguish between the two types of proteins, group A and group B, using amino acid composition. There are several ways we can use the several features, right? You can use to for the distinguishing different types of proteins based on structure or function, and so on. Next class we will discuss about the more details about the hydrophobicities and how to construct profiles, right? And you can use the potential applications of the different aspects from the features obtained from the sequ primary sequence. Then we go with the secondary structures and secondary structure prediction and so on. Thanks for your kind attention.